Hey guys, welcome to tutorial on how to use Nero Designer for your scoping projects. So we have our design template file loaded in. It will look something like this. Clicking on the project option, we'll go ahead and choose import from DXF to import our DXF. Note you can import CSV or LiDAR files as well. Once this is loaded through, we'll go ahead and click the corresponding checkboxes for our file. In this case, because it just has terrain and no pole data, we'll only choose the terrain and overlay options and click apply. As this is loading, you can see that it will give us the contours of our area. Clicking on the survey tool over here, we can add the EPSG code so that we can apply our Google Maps satellite overview. I'll go ahead and type that in, click on the overlay for Google Maps, and that will start to bring through. No, you can expand your design area by clicking on these grids here. Once this has come through, we'll now go ahead and start to place our line. To do this, we'll click on the conductor tool here, choose our appropriate types. In this case, I'll change the pole to be a 12.5 meter and our construction to be a delta. Now, by simply left clicking, we can go ahead and place our poles at the desired location. Using the plan view, we can adjust the location of them so that we, it's more precise, as this will only allow it to move in a, in a much more defined area. So we can go ahead, fine tune all of these. And make sure that we're happy with their locations. Once this is done, we can go ahead and model some obstructions by clicking on the obstructions tool over here. To do that, we will place a obstruction, choose the type, in this case we'll simulate a house, click on prism, and now we can go ahead and adjust the location of it. To be something like this, so that we can go ahead and check our clearances. Now, by turning on the view and turning on utilization, we can look at the tip loads of our span. We can see that this is showing the tip loads where they are exceeded for our entire network. However, by clicking on the conductor span, we're also able to see the utilization of each of the poles. We can see that we have three poles that need addressing. Those are gonna be our end poles and also the pole in the middle. Before we do that, we can look at our profile view to check our clearances. This can be changed by going into clearances and changing this line here. We'll leave it at 5.5 meters for now. We can go through and fine tune the location of these poles to make sure that there are no clearance violations. With these bottom cables here, showing the sag under our different environments. From this menu, we're able to add or delete poles as required. In this case, I will need to add a pole here. So I click on our pole tool, make sure that we've used an appropriate pole and click on the span. And you'll see that we can now place a pole at our desired location. In a similar manner, we can go ahead and delete poles either on the profile or the perspective view by first clicking on a pole and then pressing the delete key. In order to reverse that, we can click Control Z and our pole will reappear. Now we can see that from our utilization diagram, there were three poles that needed addressing. Those were the end poles here, as well as our mid-span pole here. To go ahead and do this, we can either click on the pole, go into structure, and then click add opposing stay. 
and this will automatically oppose the forces from the diagram. The other option is we can go through and we can use the stay tool. We can choose the location, so to either change how it's being attached, change the cable to be a steel one, for example this one, and we can now change where our stay is being placed. In this case, I will hover over the cross arm, left click, and you'll see that it will place a stay. We can go ahead and add multiple stays as required. For this pole here, because it's coming next to a roundabout, we might need to make this a bollard pole instead. To do this, it's the same idea. We first choose the stay tool, place the stay. Once we've clicked on the stay itself, we then choose use bollard pole. You can see that we're now able to drag this bollard pole across the road, and place another stay on that to secure it. Now, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and check clearances. Whilst we have the clearances from our profile view, you can go ahead and also choose this tool here to select different clearance measurements. You'll see that once I've selected this, it will show our behavior of our span from under the environments shown in the environments tab, which is up here. These can be configured as required, which we covered in another video. In this case, we're just going to use them as is. We can now go ahead and left click on any of these required on any of these conductor spans and choose the clearance to our desired location. In this case, I'm looking at the ground and you can see in our properties panel distances there. In this case, I want to measure the clearance between this building and say our maximum blowout condition. To do that, I'll click on the blowout and left click on the building and you'll see that we have different clearances. From here, you're able to go ahead and adjust as required. Once we're happy with our clearances, we can now go ahead and begin to export. First thing is if we wanted to look at specific tip loads, we could click on the pole. And you'll see that when I do that, it will bring up our structure tab here, which shows not only the force diagram, but also the forces being placed on the pole itself. In order to export the tip load for this, we scroll down and choose export results to PDF. And you'll see that will open the tip load, which contains the tip load summary, the bending moment summary, and its behavior under the different environmental conditions. We wanted to go ahead and export that tip load for the entire design. We will go ahead and click in the report button here and choose the export tip load reports for the entire design. And you'll see that that will open a folder. In this case, we want to go ahead and export our profile PDF. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now you can see that we have the PDF of the profile itself. Note that this can also be exported to DXF, as well as the plan view to both PDF and DXF as well. This will once again give us a summary of all of the components of our line, the environments, and the behavior of the individual components under those environments. If you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us either over our intercom or at the info at NERA email address. Hope this has been very helpful, and I'll see you on the next training video. Thank you.